Good evening and welcome to the opening ceremonies of the Hampton Bay School District commencement exercises for the class of 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as Nicholas Corridor, Senior Class President, leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And please remain standing as Senior Allison Pensa leads us in the singing of the National Anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, here we are, 2020, 
and I'm standing here again looking to my graduates for solutions. This time, we aren't saving the Gulf of Mexico, but instead, we're trying to save the world from a public health crisis. 2020 couldn't just leave it there, as we are about to send you into a world filled with civil unrest, political divisions, and of course, a completely unstable economy. The message I offer to our graduating gay men and women is simple. The world needs your mind, your service, and all the ingenuity you can muster. While I hope you find joy in your personal and professional lives, I also hope that you find cures and solutions. I hope you find common ground in which we can begin to rebuild humanity. I hope you find a way to leave this world in a better place than we left it for you. And if you have some time to address that whole brown tide and global warming thing, that would be really nice. For anyone who claims this is all impossible, I offer you some powerful words by Muhammad Ali. Impossible is not a fact, it's an opinion. Impossible is not a declaration, it's a dare. Impossible is potential, impossible is temporary, impossible is nothing. I believe in all of you. I know you have the intelligence, the strength, and the character to make the impossible reality. When this moment in time passes, we will find a new normal with all of you at the helm. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Thank you. Good evening, Hampton Mays. This is certainly not the way I had hoped to be delivering this speech to you, and I admit that I struggled to come up with the right things to say. We have already spent months apart without getting to say goodbye to each other. Nonetheless, graduation should still represent a joyful time in all of our lives. I wish I could see all of your faces before me today, especially because it's difficult to tell how badly your corny jokes bomb when there's no one to laugh with or at you, and it's a bit awkward to poke fun at your principal when he's one of the only audience members. <coughs> to start, I would like to say thank you to the people who have made this moment possible for me and my entire class. Thank you to my parents for being my constant support system, even when I'm sleep deprived. And thank you to my brother Sage for bringing the art of being an annoying sibling to new heights. Thank you to the administration for bending over backwards trying to make our senior celebrations as special as possible. I know that it wasn't easy for you to allow us to decorate our graduation caps, but this was one of the greatest victories of our entire quarantine. Also, thank you to Mr. Clemenson for always having a new dad joke ready to make me laugh and brighten my day. Most of all, I would like to thank the teachers at Hampton Bays for how supportive they've been throughout the entire online learning process. I don't want to only focus on these past few months because I've been a student at Hampton Bays since kindergarten. None of us would be who we are today without the teachers who have guided us along the way. Curriculum and material can be delivered by anyone, but there are only certain rare teachers who have the ability to have profound influence on our knowledge, skills, confidence, and character. They help shape directionless balls of play into people with the foundation for future endeavors, challenges, and the pursuit of our own individual form of success. Thank you to Mrs. DeFridis, Mr. Cobbs, and especially Mr. Dolphon for rekindling my love for reading and writing and for reminding me why this subject has always been so special to me. Thank you, Mrs. McCauley and Mrs. Cobbs. I'll miss traveling back in time with you. Thank you so much to Ms. Barrett for being an absolute hero to our entire calculus class. We miss you and appreciate you more than words could possibly say. Thank you, Mr. Fotopoulos, for all the fun that we had during volleyball, and to Mrs. Fotopoulos as well for all the wonderful experiences we've had with FBLA. Thank you, Mrs. Halsey, for being a second mom to so many of us and for making band the best way to start every school day. To the dynamic duo in the library, Ms. Photo and Ms. Lowenthal, thank you for your support, honesty, and all of the laughs we've shared. I could dedicate an entirely different speech to the science department at Hampton Bays High School. Thank you, Mr. I, for your unmatched perpetual kindness. Ms. Vicini, for all the snacks and your iconic catchphrases. Mr. Arbocus, for putting up with our shenanigans. Ms. Valenti, for bringing out the crazy scientist in all of us and for trusting us to not burn down the building. And thank you so much, Dr. Forsberg, for preparing us for life after Hampton Bays and for molding us into the researchers we are today. Finally, we wouldn't have accomplished anything as a grade without our amazing class advisors. Mrs. Bishop and Ms. Richter, thank you so much for everything that you've done to make our high school experience special, and we appreciate all the late nights that you gave up for us. 
I know it hasn't been easy trying to rally our grade together at times, but thank you for how much you cared about all of us and for keeping us in line. Now I'd like to address the class of 2020. Without all of you, I certainly wouldn't be the person I am today. First of all, congratulations to everyone in this wonderful class, and I wish you the best of luck wherever the future may take you. High school hasn't always been a smooth road. Sometimes it can be an overwhelming place, and it may feel as though the ceiling may cave in on you. And I mean that literally. I thought for sure that by sophomore year, the roof would have collapsed on us from all of the leaks. There's nothing like performing in your first musical and being on stage and wondering if you're about to be electrocuted as you watch rain fall through the scaffolding of the lights. However, these once pressing concerns seem trivial when we consider the pressing issues facing the world today. There is a lot going on at the exact moment we are on the precipice of entering the world as adults. We have a lot of cleaning up to do. Our predecessors forgot to turn off the oven before they left the house. But I've had the privilege of growing up with all of you, so even though I still don't trust some of you with a motor vehicle or matches, I know that we are a resourceful, clever, and socially aware generation filled with strong individuals. I've watched in awe as we would turn our classrooms into the most riveting debate stages. I urge each member of the class of 2020 to take these skills and values with you into the future. Now more than ever, we need to be able to have conversations with people that we may not agree with. We entered the world after 9-11 and are graduating in another unprecedented moment in history. Therefore, our actions to influence this next era will hold considerable weight in the trajectory of the world. Our dexterity and ability to, act to changing, adapt to changing norms will be one of the greatest strengths that we can possibly glean from this year. We're all about to step into a greater role of independence, and whether you viewed high school as a prison or a sanctuary, or a bit of both, now it is our time to face the real world. Without the safety net of high school, the future may seem as uncertain as the school's Wi-Fi. It may feel as though high school hasn't prepared us properly for a world of taxes, budgeting, small home repairs, job interviews, but I have no doubt that we possess the cognitive flexibility to adapt to these next challenges, just like we adapted to the intermittent internet connection. In high school, we've shown that we can pull off some amazing feats, so there's no reason that this won't translate into the next chapter of our lives. Stephen Mora can pull off a three-quarter court buzzer beater, buzzer beater, Ian can pull off playing any character you throw his way, Nico can pull off hiding animals from all of our teachers, Marissa can pull off any hair color, Quinn can beat out every other shot putter in the state, Sarah can play four different instruments during the same musical performance, five French students can convince the district to create an AP French class, and Riley can lead us to the best waffles in London. As a class, we can pull off making an incredible mural after changing the theme at the last moment. We can put together a lip sync filled with complicated choreography, even if Elizabeth is the only dancer holding us together. And most notably, we have set an unbreakable record for the longest senior skip day, 105 days and counting. In the end, we can still put together a week of senior celebration in the middle of a pandemic. Our nature to be the pilots of our own destiny and not bend to the will of others is something to be proud of. We certainly weren't the most united grade throughout high school, but as we go off to college, the workforce, or if you've made the truly honorable decision to join the military, we'll always have an inimitable, unbreakable bond that will tether our heartstrings to this community and this school. I've decided to save any mention of Mr. Richard for last. A lot of people have been really building up the need for this in my speech, but for me personally, I've never needed a graduation speech to roast Mr. Richard because I've been doing it since freshman year to his face. Our principal's three greatest fears are vaping, AirPods, and seeing News 12 anywhere near campus. Even wearing a beanie, which doesn't obscure your face from security cameras, is enough to have you sent to solitary confinement with Mr. Cox. But look how far we've come. I was but a wee freshman in Hampton Bays High School when I decided to write him a scathing email of punchless items that I deemed inefficiencies in his high school. This launched me down a winding, twisting path in which I interacted with Mr. Richard periodically, usually in opposing views. In case you didn't know this about our principal, he is a huge stickler for rules, so don't even think about asking to host something as nefarious as a bingo night fundraiser. But 
Mr. Richard, I must say, despite all of our combative meetings, we never let that stop us from having a healthy debate, even if it just meant you would be talking in circles the entire time. Thank you, Mr. Richard, for your help throughout my senior year, and I'm happy that we've been able to work so well together, despite all of the tense moments we've shared throughout the years. Now that Mr. Ferraro has broken our hearts and left us, you've officially become the cool one, which is something I never thought I would hear myself say. Class of 2020, the world is almost ours. We have no trouble telling our predecessors what they've done wrong. After all, hindsight is 2020. But soon it will be our opportunity to right the ship. I've loved growing up in this town, being part of the school system, and most of all, going through this journey with all of you. Now it's our time to forge our own path, draw our own constellations, and write our own stories without word limits, and drench our minds in the nourishment of lifelong learning. Congratulations, class of 2020. I will cherish our time together, and there will never be a cheesy slogan that could encompass our 13 years together. Our class shirts couldn't have been more wrong when they said, our view of the future is clear, but we have a sturdy foundation to build upon, limitless potential, and enough toilet paper to persevere. Thank you. Hello, before I begin, I just want to acknowledge all the people who underwent the difficult process of planning our graduation this year. Thank you to all the families supporting us this week, especially my older sister, Emma. I'll always remember our strict diet of McDonald's chicken nuggets every weekday and Blue Burger on the weekends. Now, I wouldn't be where I am today without Dr. Forsberg, who taught me to always strive for greatness, Ms. Barrett, who was able to teach me integral calculus through a computer screen. Mr. Dolphon, who taught me that even when you're 100% right, someone will still find a way to make you wrong. And the chemistry squad, Mr. Arbocus and Ms. Valenti, who A, made me not only tolerate but enjoy two straight years of the periodic table of elements, and B, didn't get mad when we lit the classroom sinks on fire. Most importantly, I just want to say hey to the class of 2020. A week before the school closed, we coincidentally performed a dance at class night to the song, We're All In This Together. What can I say? We were ahead of our time. I wish I could be speaking to you all in person, but for now, I thank you for listening to me here on this platform. 2020, that was supposed to be our year. We were going to live it up like the great Gatsby. My family was really about to be able to sit front row at graduation. We we're all going to wear sparkly dresses to our roaring 20s themed prom. This was supposed to be it. It took a while, but I've chosen to believe in the bigger picture, even if I'm not sure what that is yet. Right now, I just want to let go of all the reasons why I can't be with you in person today, just for these next few minutes. During this quarantine, something I became fairly interested in is yoga. I roll out my yoga mat in my room and pull up a quick little 45 minute session on YouTube. As an athlete, I prefer what we call yoga lattes because it's more of an intense workout. But no matter how intense, we always end with a five minute shavasana, which by the way, is where you literally just lay flat on your back and do nothing. Shavasana serves as a moment for you to center yourself and forget all of life's craziness. So let this speech be your shavasana. I'm just going to talk as if life wasn't so unbelievably different right now. The biggest theme of Shavasana in all of my yoga sessions has been gratitude, and amidst my many complaints on a daily basis, I am grateful. I am grateful for Pam Grahalis for sticking by me for all four years of high school, ever since we won the ping pong tournament in ninth grade gym class. I'm grateful for my best friend since pre-K, Ali O'Connor, because even though I attended public school while she was a Catholic school kid for, for most of our lives growing up, we ended up being able to graduate together from Hampton Bays High School 14 years later. To be ending this chapter of my life with both my oldest friend and a relatively new one is a true blessing. Thank you both for that. I also want to thank Ms. Pensa for always letting me use her Keurig machine for my emergency coffee breaks the West Hampton Beach softball team for never taking it easy on us, and just the security guard for stealing me that strawberry frosted donut from the college admissions representative breakfast last year. Most of all, thank you to Hampton Bay's High School for allowing me to be anything I wanted. I wasn't just a student or just an athlete. I was able to be both while also becoming, to my surprise, an artist. In most schools, you choose one path and you stick with it. 
I was given the opportunity to take many paths and really find myself. High school to me was built in moments, and I thank you for allowing me to live these moments no matter where I am, no matter where I was. Observing a shoulder dislocation repair in the operating room of a major hospital, defeating the top seed in the Suffolk County Class A softball playoffs, painting a rainbow elephant on one of Miss Bishop's classroom ceiling tiles. Each of these vastly different activities added a nice balance to my life these past four years. Hampton Bay's high school was like a real life high school musical where anyone was able to challenge the status quo. Now, I did a lot of thinking during this speech, but all of that would mean nothing without my parents. I know it's cheesy to say, mom and dad, this one's for you, but standing up here right now, I realize how true it is. <laughs> for the 7 a.m. softball trips in 30 degree weather, the breakfast burritos you would make me before school, and your patience in the face of my neuroticism, mom, I thank you. For the endless essays you had to proofread, helping me out when I crashed the car twice in two weeks, and trying to make your pancakes as thin as possible because that's the way I like them, Dad, I thank you. No matter what, from you two there was always love, and that was the best support. So that's it. Thank you, really, for making it so easy for me to find so much gratitude. Now this would be the part in Shavasana where you would roll, roll out your ankles, wiggle your toes, and wake your body back up. You might be thinking, wow, that speech just threw so much random stuff at me. I hope so. I hope it made you think about something besides what's going on in the news for just a few minutes. Even if you remember nothing about what I just said, I ask that you do try and take time for yourself and find gratitude. Because despite these challenges, life's pretty awesome. Thank you. Hello everyone. I had to add that this is exactly how I pictured my graduation to be like back in kindergarten. But all jokes aside, before I start my speech, I want to thank and acknowledge everyone who helped make today possible. Mr. Richard, Mr. Clementson, all of our wonderful and amazing teachers, our Board of Education, our incredible class advisors, Mrs. Bishop and Ms. Richter, and of course, my beautiful family. I love you guys. It's insane. We're really here. This 13-year journey has not come to an end. It feels like just yesterday, I was on the elementary school playground, running around, role-playing Indiana Jones with Lucas Brown and Jack Gilbert. Ironically, Gilbert was the shortest one of all of us. He's like 6'10 now. Things change. It's true. Things will change. Yes, one day we'll get married. Yes, one day we'll have kids. And yes, one day we're going to have to take care of those kids. But what I'm trying to get at is that although things are going to change, the friendships and memories that we built during these past 13 years will have. I mean, how could we ever forget Mr. Polero's enormous smile at the winter concert? Or Stephen Moore chowing down the pies on class night, winning back the Mayor's Cup, and of course, our wrestling team becoming league champions after 15 years. We've been through a lot together, guys. Don't ever let that go. And definitely don't let go of the memories that we've done along the way. Over my four years here at Hampton Bays, I've learned everything from performing jazz with Mrs. Halsey to perfecting taking my hat off just before Mr. Richard pops out of literally nowhere. To keep this short and sweet, I'll tell you about these little lessons. First, in the real world, do not mess with people like Mr. Burger. You'll always lose. This rare species of man will do anything, and I mean anything, to come out with a win. Spirit Week was like the Super Bowl for this guy. But if you ask me, he bought his win against the class of 2020. Hashtag root. All jokes aside, second, always do whatever you can to make somebody's day. You never know what's going on in someone's life. And just a smile or a compliment can make even the worst day turn around for the better. And third, do not, and please do not fundraise for three years to have an incredible senior prom just to have it canceled. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. The lesson that was most important to me was never give up. The amount of times that this class has been pushed to the limit and has come out victorious is incredible. I can't express how proud I am to be a part of the class of 2020. All right. Now that I got all that inspiration out of the way, it's time to gas my class up. The class of 2020 consists of some pretty remarkable people, including nine of our friends going off into the military. I'm going to miss you guys, and I thank you all for your service. Our class also consists of very bright-minded individuals, including our valedictorian, Scott McMorris, Tristan Halsey, arguably one of the most hardworking musicians I've had the honor of playing alongside, and Quinn Smith, our first New York State champion. 
The members of the class of 2020 will go down in history forever. I mean, think about it. We're the first class to ever graduate on a side. We're different. Seriously, guys, we are different. Look around. People that have previously graduated see this commencement as a tragedy or even a nightmare. But we, the class of 2020, turned this graduation into something that will never be forgotten. We stand together, proud to take the next step in our careers. And most importantly, we stick together no matter what. Never forget that. Even though we're starting a new chapter in our lives, we're always going to be a family. Now, I want to take this moment to personally thank the best class advisors Hampton Bays has ever had. Keeks, Ms. Richter, we did it. I thank you so much for giving your 100% to this class. All those long nights fixing up the mural and watching you guys literally fail the class advisors event at class night will never be forgotten. Although we've had ups and downs as a class, Keeks, I know you love me more than your son, Tupper. And Richter, I know you love me more than your solar study in the movies. I love you guys so much. And now, to my class. We did it, guys. We really did it. I didn't believe the seniors when they told us that this was going to be quick. But we're here, ready to take our next step. I love you all, and it was an honor to be your class president. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Thank you very much. Good evening to the class of 2020. Gabby, thank you for a wonderful performance of Hampton Bay's alma mater. As you stood on Pompoc Bridge just a few nights ago, you represented those timeless words perfectly just above the sparkling waters of Atlantic's tide. You captured the pride and honor we feel in the Hampton Bay's public schools. As you graduate as the third ranking member of the senior class and head to the University of Pennsylvania, I hope that you will take that pride with you. Nicholas, Mr. President, thank you for your words as well. How right you are. With your leadership as class president, you have turned graduation into something that will never be forgotten. You have reset the standard for Hampton Bays, and I'm grateful to you for your positive and inclusive leadership of the class of 2020. During every last Zoom planning meeting that we've had, in the last 100 days, your smile and energetic spirit made sure that we all knew that this year wasn't just different, it was special. Best of luck to you as you write your next chapter at Stony Brook University. This week's commencement exercises are a celebration for us all. To our educators, kindergarten through 12th grade, we celebrate your job well done. To the parents and families who are in the BTSA, PAPA, the boosters, to those who sat at the kitchen table pushing homework and writing flashcards, to those of you who worked multiple jobs with long hours to make sure your children could take advantage of every Hampton Bay's opportunity, to those of you who picked up and dusted off your children, who encouraged them to persevere through struggle, you are each celebrating the hopes that you had in September 2006 as you watched your little one board the school bus bound for Hampton Bay's Elementary School. To the class of 2020, the greatest kudos goes to you. You completed your senior year under the most challenging and unexpected circumstances in modern history. It was certainly not the senior year you planned on, nor was it the one we planned on either. Nonetheless, you emerged stronger today than when you walked through the doors of Hampton Bay's High School four years ago or even just a few months ago in September. You resolved to end your senior year focused on the future. As Mr. Richard said, you've earned a record amount of money in scholarship awards. You set a record for commitments to the military. You have logged countless hours in the service 
of others. For many reasons, you've earned the right to graduate from Hampton Bays. I can go on for quite some time about the academic, co-curricular, and athletic opportunities that you took advantage of, or thriving in the performing and visual arts, or the service you completed, or for the world that you saw on exciting field trips. But I'd rather spend our last few minutes together focused on something different. And I'd like to tell a story as shared by the author Ira Bayak. He recounts, years ago, anthropologist Margaret Mead was asked by a student what she considered to be the first sign of civilization and culture. The student expected Mead to talk about fish hooks or clay pots or grinding stones. But no, instead, Margaret Mead said the first sign of civilization in ancient culture was a thigh bone, a thigh bone that had been broken and healed. Because you see, Mead explained, in the animal kingdom, if you break your leg, you die. You cannot protect yourself from danger, you can't get to the river for water, and you cannot hunt for food. No animal survives a broken leg long enough for the bone to heal. A broken and healed thigh bone is evidence that someone has taken the time to stay with the one who fell, who bound up the wound, who carried that person to safety, and who tended to their recovery. Helping someone else through difficulty is where civilization starts. In many ways, as you grew up in Hampton Bays, you cared for others, but not as much as you have in the last few months. In that time, you found new and innovative ways to stay connected to one another, to keep each other engaged and healthy. You reconnected or doubled down on reaching out to grandparents, family, and friends, especially those who may be more isolated and locked down as a result of COVID-19. Your virtual service groups raised money and food for local organizations serving our neighbors in need. And when it came to commencement this week, you resoundingly preferred to have a unique and different ceremony now versus a more traditional one later for the simple fact that nine of your classmates begin deploying to the military next week. To put it simply, you made a difficult time easier because of your care for others. That is such a trademark Hampton Bay's value, one that I hope you will take with you long after you've pulled away from Argonne Road. In addition to you, our graduates, we also recognize and say farewell to those families who will graduate their last senior tonight and move on from the Hampton Bay's public schools as a family. Thank you for your commitment to us throughout the years as your children grew. We also recognize Ms. Daciano, Mrs. Poland, and Mrs. Nelson, Mr. Pandolfo, as they retire this year from a combined 125 years of service to Hampton Bay's. For those of us in this school system, it is one of our greatest honors to work in public education with children, with your children, and to celebrate your commencement. And we acknowledge that even in this new way, we just have a short time left together. And like a vacation that comes to an end, we start to get that pit in our stomach that it's almost over. That there were things we wanted to do or see or the things that we wanted to say if we had just a little bit more time. We felt that way on March 16th, and in each of the days that passed, where it became clearer, we would not end the year together in a traditional manner. Sure, we cheer the arrival of summer and the places that you're off to, but we have that fleeting feeling, almost like a Sunday night after an amazing weekend. And that's why commencements are filled with speeches, because we want to cram in every last thing that we want you to remember, or to be proud of, or to think about as you leave Hampton Bays. Each year, I try to capture what makes this a unique class, for at any time, we have 13 unique groups of students who, while sharing similar experiences, have a much different view on the world. This unique class includes future doctors, soldiers, teachers, photographers, journalists, engineers, researchers, and maestros. You've each designed your high school experience uniquely, and you'll enter the world uniquely. You were born in the shadow of 9-11, 
you graduate in the shadow of a global health emergency. The bookends of your young lives are like no other, yet they have forged in you a resilience, a perseverance, and I hope the will to be strong because our world needs you to be strong and compassionate and to solve problems more so than ever before. So now my quick advice. I've, off, I've offered this often at commencements in the past because it is appropriate as you move ahead. I had no idea how appropriate it would be in 2020. Mrs. Clemenson keeps a special trinket on our fireplace that her grandfather gave to her, a copper turtle. Over the past few years, I've talked about this turtle because it holds a special place in our home because of the message that Mrs. Clemenson's grandfather once wrote to her. The note is simple and scrawled on a post-it note. It reads, Behold the turtle, for he only makes progress when he sticks his neck out. So stick your neck out, class of 2020. Stick it out and care for those around you. Be inclusive, be accepting, enrich the lives of others, and put yourself to work and make it count. As I close, I will finish where I began. Seniors, we will miss you. As you graduate, please never forget that Hampton Bays is your home. You have every reason to be proud of that. Behold the class of 2020. You are HB strong. Congratulations and thank you for sharing with us the opportunity to have just a few more minutes with you. The words you are about to hear between Mr. Richard, School Board President Kevin Springer, and myself are a serious tradition among all high schools in New York State. In all the unique ways that commencements are being celebrated and held across New York State this week, these words are being spoken to universally and officially turn pieces of paper into New York State's authorization to call you a high school graduate. Principal Richard will confirm the readiness of each graduate to me as the superintendent of schools. I will then proudly verify to the board president, Mr. Springer, that the Hampton Bays Union Free School District has done its job and these proud men and women are ready to graduate. Mr. Springer's assurance is to Albany, to our commissioner of education and the board of regents, that each of these candidates is certifiably and proudly a graduate of Hampton Bays High School. Let's begin. At this time, it is both an honor and a privilege to present the class of 2020 to the superintendent of schools, Lars Clemenson, and to declare that these candidates of this class have met all the necessary requirements for their high school diplomas. As superintendent of schools and with, the pro and with pride in the achievements, success, and obvious potential of each of our Hampton Bay's high school seniors, it is my privilege to certify to board president Kevin Springer as well as Vice President Richard Joslin and Board Trustees Dot Capuano, Ann Colhane, and Liz Scully, the eligibility of these candidates, the class of 2020, for a high school diploma. By the authority vested in me as President of the Board of Education, I am honored to declare that these candidates present, present are eligible to receive their high school diplomas from the State of New York and the Hampton Bays Union Free School District and an enti are entitled to all rights and privileges pursuant to this issue. With pride and celebration and the approval of the entire Board of Education, we will begin the conference of diplomas to the class of 2020. Joined by the Board of Education, district administration, and the family and guests of each graduate, Ceremonies will take place under the grand entrance of Hampton Bays High School in individual ceremonies on Friday and Saturday, June 26th and June 27th. I now declare the commencement exercises for the Hampton Bays Class of 2020 now open. Congratulations. 